It's Tuesday, October 17, 2023. I'm David Ellis with the Ellis Report on Capital Media HD 99.3. Venezuela's government and opposition returned to political negotiations today in Barbados after nearly a year. The talks are seeking to find a way out of Venezuela's long-running political and economic crisis. The U.S. State Department welcomed the Venezuelan talks and says the U.S. will work to support the negotiations. News reports suggest a favorable outcome in the talks could lead Washington to ease oil sanctions against the Venezuelan government. A study shows that alcohol and marijuana are the drugs of choice for Barbadian women who struggle with substance abuse. It also says that many of them are afraid to seek treatment out of fear for their children's welfare and the stigma of rehab. Police statistics in Jamaica show that between January and the end of September, there were 1,038 murders in that country. That is a 12% dip when compared with the same period for 2022. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says that while gang-related murders are dropping, the same cannot be said for domestic violence, and he says new laws are coming to focus on this. We may very well have to increase the reporting obligations for persons who have been brought in and warned for the use of violence and threats. In Trinidad, there is a concern about an increase in road fatalities. Up to yesterday, 83 people have died in accidents in that country. The crime situation in St. Lucia remains a matter of concern. At least 67 people have been murdered in that country so far for the year. And in one of the latest developments, a man has been critically injured after being shot in the village of Denery. The union representing public workers in Grenada complains that it's too hot in various government ministries because the air conditioners aren't working. President Brian Grimes says that some departments have been without working ACs for the past three months. Despite the fact that we wrote, they did not answer in a way that gave any time-sensitive um, commitment to fixing the problem. And this is the issue that we have. Scientists studying long COVID say that changes in a chemical called serotonin could help explain some of the persistent symptoms that people suffer after being infected. The UPenn team found that long COVID patients have lower levels of serotonin in their blood and that this could underlie some of their neurocognitive symptoms. That's because there's evidence parts of the virus remain in the gut of some long COVID patients after their acute infection. This viral reservoir can drive inflammation, which interferes with the body's ability to produce serotonin. It's possible that in long COVID patients, this lack of serotonin affects what's known as the vagus nerve, which could cause cognitive difficulties and trouble with memory, among other things. President Biden travels to Tel Aviv and Amman tomorrow on a trip meant to signal full U.S. support as Israel responds to the Hamas attacks, but also to press for humanitarian aid for civilians in Gaza and safe passage out for Americans in the conflict zone. The trip comes as Israel prepares to launch a ground assault on Hamas in Gaza. The weather forecast for today says that there will be a mix of sunshine and clouds with brief isolated light showers. I'm David Ellis with the Ellis Report on Capital Media HD 99.3.